So this is a 90-year-old female with a non-healing wound. You could see the wound on the uh, plantar aspect. As you'll see as I go through, this is not the first intervention that the patient had. This is what I had when I got in, and this is, this is done at the OBL. You can see here at the top, one closure device, two closure device. So those, those are Kelts. You know, and just one teaching point I would say here is I personally like to stick antegrade, and also I like to get into that very proximal SFA, not necessarily the common femoral. Yeah. I think it's safe, effective, and it's been great. And I've been loving the Kelts. It's, it's bailed me out of like some really tough access. Love it. I really... I th- First, so I had a love-hate love relationship with it. Yeah, I have a hate love. I was like, no way, I'm going to use this dig rivet, and I'm like, okay, right. now like yeah. I need it. <laughs> yeah, it's fantastic. And they initially want to sell it to you because of the OBL patient get up an hour. I use it yeah. all the time in the hospital, and the nurses oh, are yeah. so happy, so oh. happy when we use it, and it's been great. This patient actually had a recent intervention two weeks prior. Uh, with a different closure device. And when I did my initial access, my wire wouldn't cross well. Mm -hmm. So I actually, when that happens, I often inject a little bit of contrast through the needle, and and that's what I saw. I I think that was, you know, right there. Yeah, exactly. I think it's a little bit of an angioseal injury. little collagen plug right there. Right. So what I ended up, there, there are a couple of ways to deal with that in the OBL and in the hospital setting. But what I decided to do is I abandoned that access and I stuck a little bit higher up probably by that first Kelt there at the, I guess, kind of at the common femoral SFA region right there. I easily crossed that, and I, and I did a balloon angioplasty. That wasn't enough. It didn't look great, and I was afraid, you know, it wasn't going to work well, so I actually put a Viabon in. It's a 5 millimeter by 50 millimeter Viabon. Now, we talked about expensive devices in the OBL. Yeah, just, yeah it that's just an happens expensive to be, one. Yeah, that's expensive, but, but it was a free one because... It was from a center that had closed. It was already bought, so it didn't go to our bottom line. So, you know, somebody paid for it. I got to use it. I would have used it anyway, but uh, it was perfect, and I'm pretty sure it was going to be expiring the next two months or so as well. So that was their first. One thing I'd like to say is I love anti-grade access. I do it preferably for any of my cases. Here, when I'm seeing that lesion, you know, in the proximal SFA, I guess I may have gone up and over just so- I didn't know about it. Yeah. No, no, but this was yeah, a shocker. That, yeah. This yeah, was that's a surprise. Right. That's right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I knew awesome. what we that had to great. attack after. Yeah. I, I'm just showing this just because of, okay, I saw this. I, I agree. I was thinking, okay, maybe I'm going to yeah, fix reprep this from up and over, reprep. As you see, the next the next one, I decided to go a little bit higher because I, I thought we can tackle it from that way, and, and we did. The rest of the SFA popliteal artery was, was patent down to the very distal popliteal artery. And you see here, an anterior tibial RE that occludes basically. I mean, it's a, it's a wisp of a blood vessel that occludes. Peroneal artery is, is not great. Posterior tibial artery occludes here. You'll see on the other images, and, and you see some reconstitution here at the dorsalis pedis. Hard to tell on this picture, but you'll see on the next uh, images, this patient had been treated previously at our center, and we could not cross initially that anterior tibial artery. And sure. a DVA was performed, actually. So you'll see that okay. there's a posterior tibial artery to posterior tibial vein DVA. She actually yeah, had I a kind different... of see some stents yeah, yeah, if you can, exactly. So she had a wound, a different wound that healed after the DVA was created. That DVA was created, let's say, I want to say six months ago, that wound healed for the most part. And then um, she had presented back in June with an occluded DVA. And I actually, in the OBL, used thrombectomy. I actually ended up using... The Phillips, I think it's called Quick Clear, which oh, yeah, is, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's actually great for the OBL setting. And that's one thing I actually wanted to kind of touch upon. The devices that I wish the companies would focus on a little bit more is thrombectomy in the ASC or OBL. For acute thrombectomy during a case, I think it's important to have devices in the OBL setting for that. Yeah. And, yeah, you, you know, we can't, yeah, yeah, you can't just buy a Penumbra Jedi and, and a, you can't have all, everything that you have in the hospital. So here's what we have. I decided this DVA had gone down too many times. I'm not going to recanalize it. And sure. we now have this wispy dorsalis pedis artery. So I, I showed this picture because this is our OBL, and this is what we yeah. end up having. We have an anterograde axis here in the groin and the a retrograde axis at that dorsalis pedis artery. And, you, you know, you have nice windows. This is our GE. So nice. Uh, oh, we see. It's nice. We got music playing. This would be great when people, you know, join for our, our live yeah. case. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so, so we're great. able to access that. You have great ultrasound. We have, you know, the hockey stick transducer in the uh-huh. OVL. We actually don't have that in the hospital. I don't know if you have yeah. it in yours. We we got one recently, and I'm like, this is amazing. <laughs> yeah, we actually have that in the OBL. You know, we, we just didn't get ours yet in the hospital, even though, you know, hopefully soon. So in this case, we went anterograde retrograde from, in this case, I have an 035. This happens to be a CXI from Cook in the anterograde down into the um, very distal popliteal artery. I was able to get a wire down into that anterior tibial artery, but obviously we couldn't reenter. And then from above, you kind of see here, in this, the plane between the two catheters. This is a 65 centimeter 018 CXI going through that sheath, and this is another 018, but that's telescoped through the 035. So they're close. Right there, they don't look the closest, but as you continue down the anterior tibial artery, they're close. So you know we're going to be successful. Do we need a balloon, you know, both channels to pop that septum and, and try to re-enter, or can we just spontaneously re-enter? So happened to be I was able to spontaneously re-enter through that anterior tibial artery down and then go up for the popliteal artery. Because it was difficult for me to get that anterior tibial artery wired down from the groin axis, I wanted to keep that wire. And I just used another wire to basically become externalized through the 035 catheter. So, and a fit, because I use 014 wires, probably an advantage glide wire and probably some other, and a command, I would guess, because those are my two go-to wires for, for these type of cases. Yeah. So once we now have through and through access, we externalize, we just do balloon angioplasty throughout the entire anterior tibial artery. You can see here the stent graft yeah. uh, down yeah. is part of the DVA. The DVA. Exactly. And that DVA really caused problems in the veins. So you see the stent graft goes down to the calcaneus. That's a good teaching point. Yeah. But then, you know, some of the teaching is then to use a supera down to, in the foot mm-hmm. to kind of extend that. But again- That's what we've that, been doing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that didn't seem to work. One one teaching point I want to make right here is just that what we do is I took the sheath out of the dorsalis pedis axis and I just leave that wire in just in case I can't cross and something happens and, you know, or you lose your wire. But, and then we advance the balloon across- the, that axis point and get down into the foot. And you can see here, we're going through the pedal loop and getting down towards to the vessels. We crossed relatively easy through through that distal segment and we just did prolonged balloon angioplasty. Ended up a 1.5 balloon down in the loop. And then I think we went up to a 2.5 throughout the rest of the anterior tibial artery. And here's our final result. I did end up putting a four millimeter Beautiful. self-expanding stand, which I, uh, I kind of like to use those because they're a little bit longer. At the origin kind of, of the AT, with four millimeter self expanding. Yeah, so you got the the there. four the four millimeter self expanding sense that go through four French sheaths on an O O one eight platform. It's the Biotronic. Uh, oh stents. yeah, Biotronic. Yeah, yeah, and that's another stent that we used to have in the hospital, and we got to get back because their deployment mechanism was a little funky initially, but they've really worked on it, and it's fantastic for these type of segments. Because DES in that in that yeah, area, you have to put coronaries? a bunch of them. Yeah, you know, you'd have to put a bunch of them in. How long is the Biotronic? They can go up to 100. I mean, I think I used a 4 by 60 here, and and it looks fantastic. You know, and you see here, I have that little clamp that's kind of, it is an AP projection of the foot, whereby you can see the tip of that clamp. That's really in the wound base, and now all of a sudden, now we have an intact pedal loop. So, Yeah, you got it totally intact. Yeah, so I'm hoping, right, I'm hoping that she's going to do well, heal up that, that wound, and she'll live with an occluded DVA. You know, one thing you you mentioned, you know, your the sizes of balloons that you've been using. I've really started to like the Nanocross, the tapered balloons. I just love it. I love using that because I feel like it's basically saving me a, a step in a balloon. Obviously, the price is a little bit more than the conventional balloon, but I think less than two. They are great. I, I like it. I did not Ivis in this case just for... Patient I mean, age, uh, th- that was a game a time decision. Case. There's a l- exactly, and I think that we, you know we needed to move a little uh, quicker for her. Yeah. In these cases, also, what I really like are the short shaft balloons. I think that's something important for for anybody. I- I'm not sure if you use them, but you have the 90 cm 018s and you know an 014 balloons, especially from the uh, pedal Anagram. access. Yeah. yeah, and then you know you could use a little bit of a shorter wire as well. You could use a 180 wire or a 210 command and. You know, it just makes life a lot easier in challenging cases when you have that. And uh, one thing I didn't understand is still why why you had a safety wire. So, I mean, you externalize your access from the first crossing. 
this wire here, right? So this wire, what I do is I what I take out the sheath that's from there, I just put in the wire for the micro set just to keep that access in case something happens in case, let's say this balloon gets stuck and then I have to pull my whole wire and I, and I can't recross, then I, at least I know I maintain that access and I could kind of redo. But once I'm through and through and pass, and I'll pull that wire and do a balloon yeah. tamponade there. So that's kind of, I hope that's a little bit more clear. Yeah, that makes sense, yeah. That's just in case. I, mean, I don't want to leave the sheath in because it's occlusive. Yeah, exactly. And it's hard to get, and it's also hard to wire the distal to it when the sheath is in. You always kind of get into the yeah, end hole of the you sheath. Have, you start pushing the sheath or whatnot. And then you never really know if you don't want to get the balloon out and then cause a balloon arteriotomy, right? Exactly. But I always play a gamble. So like I keep the three and three wire and once I get enough plasty and I'm like, I think I'm right at the axis, but again, it's a gamble. And I was like, I hope I'm not through it. Then I'll just, I'll pull, while the balloon is up, then I'll just pull the wire, reverse it, and then do that. But I kind of like your method. And this was something that I think one of my partners, and I was like, oh, why do you need to do that? I'm like, you know what? I started doing it. I, I really like it. It's one of those, yeah. you know, examples. Like and then you could take it out right away. You know, and I love to see that little ooze, you know, because you know yeah. you're getting good blood flow then. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's once little, it's like oozing. It's a little pulse, so you're like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, you, you start, you know, the, the tech hates it because they have to clean off the puddle of blood. Yeah. But when that starts pooling next to, next to it, you're, you know, you're happy. You're like, that's good. Oh, yeah, this is a very cool case. I mean, showing you end stage DVA and now you're able to open up this, you know, this tibial and, and, and yeah. keep that arterial flow. So cool. Yeah. Why they couldn't do it. You know, I'm not sure why it couldn't get done the first time. I actually, I have one, one thought about that actually when I was reviewing it. If you kind of look at this wisp here, I think that when you create a DVA and we've seen this, I don't think there's anything written on it, but you get this neovascularity, just like arteries start filling because there's just more blood in that area. And yeah. so I just wonder if that if that artery because I went back to look at the other angios, and you um, couldn't see and it. I didn't see that. No, and it was you pretty know. easy to stick under ultrasound. I, I think it was you know one sticking in. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, that whole like yeah neovascularity and everything. It's 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 really neat. I wish we really understood what was going on, but it works. Yeah, like I said, you know, <laughs> exactly, it works. So you got to get flow. We got to get blood yeah, flow. That's get it. Flow.